Hello, I'm Love Ikuku Oyedoku. I'm your host. This is Greater Lagos Vision. Lagos prides itself as a state of excellence. It has continued to record rapid infrastructure development by Governor Babajide Sowunlu, our visionary leader, with a zeal to translate his Lagos dream into an unsurpassed legacy. The governor promised that his administration would not relent in the provision of infrastructure for coordinated and sustainable development, giving priority to continuation and completion of strategic projects in line with the state's transport master plan. This is the Greater Lagos Vision. Welcome. This episode features Lagos Rail Lines to begin commercial operations in 2023. Governor Babayide Sawulu restates commitment towards rebuilding Igbo Shere High Court to an enviable standard. Another set of 100 units of housing projects commissioned in Ikate, Leki area of Lagos State. And SARS, Governor Sawulu brokers reconciliation with youths, promises increased state investment in human capital development. And the 21st edition of the 2021 National Women Conference, organized by Committee of Wives of Lagos State Officials Council, held during the week, themed a week. These and many more when we return. Please stay with us. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu says, his administration has demonstrated commitments to the blue and red rail lines in the last two years. He said he's sure to deliver them before the end of his tenure in 2023. The governor stated this in Lagos while speaking with journalists after inspecting the level of work done by contractors handling the projects. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu and other government functionaries inspecting the rail projects, the blue and red lines. The construction of the project began over 10 years ago by the former administration of Babatunde Fashola. The governor explained that a blue line was designed to run from Okoko Michael on the Lagos Badagri Expressway through an elevated line crossing the Igomu Lagoon to Marina on Lagos Island. We are going to push back the rail you know, up until Ido, but we didn't get to Ido today. Right. So crossing um, all of that, we now cross over onto the blue line. So on the blue line, we stopped at, um, at the beginning of Marina, which is where you have the sea crossing. So there's an interesting um, development that is going on there. Because of the sea wall, you know, um, that you have at, at, at um, Ibuteru, we had to redo another sea wall. And you saw all of the sheet piles that have been done so that we can preserve and, and conserve the, 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 the water bed, you know, in that area, and we're happy that all of that is also going according to schedule. When the inspection was over, the governor assured that commercial operations will be flagged up in the first quarter of 2023. We're still on track with last quarter 2022, by the grace of God. You know, last quarter, we hope that the train will move. Last quarter or first quarter 2023, you begin to see a real and your train moving on this on this two Amen. Amen. The governor also highlighted the features of the Ikeja and Marina sessions, which are the meeting points of the red and blue rail line projects. At um, Ikeja, we, had, we saw the station and we also saw the construction of the overpass. The overpass is to ensure that vehicular movements can move over and above you know, the train that we're going underneath. Right, and we saw that work has commenced extensively. There are a few issues, um, which is what you saw the small part where you have a generator which we've gotten approval uh, with, uh, with um, Odua, and that will be removed in the next one week. The Lagos State Government has repeatedly postponed the completion date of the Blue Line. But Governor Sawolu has assured Lagosians once again that the project will be commissioned before he leaves office. <laughs> Lagos State Governor Babayide Sawunlu has restated his commitment towards rebuilding the Igbo Shire High Court to an enviable standard. The governor stated this during the launch of the fundamental principle of law practice and procedure in honor of Justice Jumuke Pedro in Lagos. 
Seated here are men and women of the legal profession who have come to lend their support to one of their own, Justice Chumoke Pedro. The moment was there of nostalgia feelings bringing back the memories of the past, the monumental destruction that followed the NSAS protests, both public and private institutions, burnt down. Police stations, BRT bus stations, and buses also burnt. Courthouses not spared. Bring the state to near Rion. What a day. And permit me for two minutes to take you back one year ago. Exactly one year ago, a disaster hit Lagos. An icon of our time. What we all grew up watching as a facade and as, as an edifice in Lagos was brought down. Lagos saw an aftermath of the NSAS and were thoroughly, thoroughly devastated. But this is Lagos. Lagos will rise again. Lagos will rise even bigger, even older, even better. Optimistically, Governor Sawonlu recounted efforts being put in place by his government at ensuring the provision of suitable courtrooms for judges in the state, rekindling the hope of the men of the bar. That's the Bushiri Courts standing in front of you as your government to commit that not only are we going to rebuild it, we'll be putting a structure that will have 49 courtrooms. It may interest you to note that the Lagos State Chief Executive also reassured these legal luminaries that his administration will continue to guarantee the independence of the judiciary at all times. As part of the commitment to rebuilding affordable houses for Lagosians, the Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawonlu has yet commissioned another set of 100 units of housing projects in the Ikate Leki area of the state. The governor also named a block of the project after a grade level 15 staff of the Lagos State Development Property Corporation, LSDPC, late engineer Wakilu Hamsats. The Bayview Estate, Ikati Elegushi Leki, brings the number of housing estates commissioned so far by Governor Sawon Luto 11. The project consists of 100 units of 68 terraces of four bedrooms with a maid's room each and 32 flats of three bedrooms with a maid's room. We were able to very um, um, audaciously push forward this project and we said we wanted to reflect a development that will speak, you know, middle upper market, you know, that will meet the yearnings of the young, upwardly mobile, you know, um, um, citizens that are in this um, Etiosa um, Elegushi corridor. And that's why we've put here three bedroom flats and four bedroom terraces, each one of them coming with a maid's quarter. So it's not for them to go outside and go and look for where they are made or their support staff will be. It's all being put into the facility of this development here. And it has also come looking at the entire family ecosystem. And so you have a swimming pool, you have a gym, you have a small hall, you have everything that can indeed, you know, meet the needs of the families of today. And that's why I'm so excited that we took that view way back to meet if the needs of today and the needs of future um, people that will be staying in this facility, in this, in this estate. According to Sawonlu, another set of housing estates will be commissioned before the end of the year and first quarter of next year. We've done 11 housing estates in less than three years, over two and a half years that we came into government, right? And we still have a lot more that we're pushing, that we're pushing. Um, we should before the end of next month, be handing over the Beche Housing Estate. That's a massive, massive, massive project that I'm very, very happy to have also been identified with. LSPC and Ministry of Housing are pushing that. It's a total of almost 500 units, uh, 480. And at that commissioning, we'll also be laying the, the foundation for phase two 
of that Ibeche housing estate. So we'll be commissioning, but we'll also be starting the phase two almost immediately. We'll also have the Shongote Do. We're going to be commissioning the phase one of Shongote Do. Shongote Do is over 1,000 flats, but the phase one of it is over 744 flats. We want to ensure before the end of the year that we also hand over you know, um, phase one of Shongote Do, which will be about 744 um, units. We'll also have houses that we're trying to complete at Odonosa in Agboa. Um, that also we're pushing all our contractors to ensure that we complete. And of course, the Undubuse Kano housing estate in Bagada. That also, we just have a little bit of snags here and there to finish. And we're hoping that before the end of this year or early next year, early next year, first quarter next year, we also should be able to hand over we also should be able to hand over Undubusi Kanu housing estate in Bagada. Commissioner for Housing Moruf Akinde Rufatai said the Somulu's administration is committed to resolving the housing deficit in the state. This, he noted, was aimed at boosting the state's economy and increase its internally generated revenue. It is worthy of note that Bayview Estate is, a, is an avoidable luxury project, which is a joint venture scheme handled by LSDP, LSDPC and MISA Limited. It comprises of 68 terraces and 32 flats in this eyebrow area. This, the inclusion of this genre of housing scheme in our portfolio is part of our social inclusion housing policy in ensuring that all classes of inhabitants are catered for by this administration. It's also part of our goal of developing a 21st century economy that housing de development should encompass luxury apartments. While appreciating Sawunlu for the support, the managing director of LSDPC, Dakru Lai Ha Yusuf, assured that no effort will be spared at ensuring that no housing scheme is left uncompleted. Under the Sawunlu administration in the last one year, we have completed and delivered in Among them are the Cotland Villa Estate on Platinum Road, Lekki. The project was initiated four years ago while Sawunlu was the MD, CEO of the organization. <music> Governor Babajide Sawunlu has promised to increase Lagos State's investment in human capital development and equip the youth with requisite 21st century skills. The governor stated this at a youth symposium organized by the Ministry of Youth and Social Development, themed Rebuilding for Greatness, Peaceful Conflict Resolution. In the wake of the NSAS Memorial, youth across Lagos State defied the national holiday and came together to participate in a peace conference aimed at creating a common platform to pursue resolution to conflicts. Governor Sawunlu listens with rapt attention as a youth led conversation on how they could effectively channel their grievances to the authorities. A true leader is somebody who is selfless, somebody who understands that leadership is a privilege. And I will tell you that a selfless person is somebody who says to the heart of the people to realize their pain. And it is when a leader sees the pain of the people, that is when he will have the ability to address and give solution to their problems. City, Daddy, I'm saying thank you. Thank you for giving me a voice, for giving me the, the privilege to be able to represent the youth in Lagos State. I'm so grateful, sir. You've done a lot. And Lagos State will keep going higher. We are rebuilding Lagos State. Yes, NSAS happened last year, but it won't happen again. Because now we are, we are hoping to light. We now know what we want for our state. Because we know that if Lagos State is not suitable for us, we are the, we are the receiving hand. So we must all put our hands together. We must all work with Lagos State government to ensure that we build a greater Lagos. When we heard about this program, we had an emergency meeting at the level of the Youth Council, and we came up with resolutions and um, a kind of proposals that we believe that if well implemented, um, the Lagos State government is going to be on the good page of the youth forever and ever. The governor said the moment for true reconciliation has begun. Today is a day of reconciliation. Today is about the youth. 
Today is about a day in which we want to take ownership of our future. Today is about not really forgetting what the past is, but indeed coming together and saying to ourselves, we want to have a future together. Savulu, who agreed with the youths, said there was a need for intergenerational dialogue to address issues that may lead to conflict proactively. While assuring of his administration's readiness to champion courses that would be beneficial to the young people, the governor promised to increase the state's investment in human capital development. And so I take your point very seriously that human capital in health, in education, is the way to go. Commissioner for Youth and Social Development, Shegu Dawudu, who was represented by the Permanent Secretary, Dr. Ulua Gbemiga Aino, said rebuilding Lagos for greatness involves constructing a formidable identity to unify people of common interest for a common goal. Aftermath of a negative conflict is never beneficial to the individual, to the society or community, or the nation at large, and even globally. I want every youth to know here that they can demonstrate certain efforts towards nation building. And that is why we felt it, the governor of Mr. Babajide Sonwolu felt it wise that it's better we sit down without this intention of blaming ourselves for what has happened to us. What we suffered within a year ago runs to millions of or trillions of naira and also colossal loss of property and lives. And as a resilient society for which Lagos State is known for, we are also further demonstrating here that we can lead and we can demonstrate that Lagos is truly a resilient society. And that is why we have deemed it fit that those that this affects are the ones that will be the forebearers to discuss these issues and see how such will never happen again. How they will also be active participants in nation building. The consensus here is that except the basic demands of the youth are substantially implemented, Nigeria may never regain their trust. And the 21st edition of the 2021 National Women's Conference, organized by Committee of Wives of Lagos State Officials, also held during the week, themed a week. Ondo State Governor Rotimi Akredolu, while declaring open the conference, called for more active participation of women in politics, saying men have failed to find solutions to numerous problems bedeviling the country. Is the 21st edition of the Hybrid 2021 Conference of the Committee of Wives of Lagos State Officials, CALSO. Having as its theme, Awake, a clarion call to the 21st century women to become fully alert of her responsibilities as a pillar, enabler, and catalyst within the family. On the state governor wrote to me, Akere Dulu declaring the conference open, beckoned on women to rise up and occupy their rightful place in politics. We have had women in this country who have contributed a lot to the development of this country. We can keep on, we can name them. Remember those famous women during the Abarayot. We knew what they did. We must remember and cannot forget Margaret Echo. Neither can forget the Queen herself. From Lyos, Ransom Kuti. We are great women. Neither can forget Ladi Kuali. And we should not lose sight of Adia Sawaba. And lately, Kudirat Abiola. So women have performed in wake in this country and we must continue to appreciate them. So I see it that when the deeds of these women it's clear to me that there is no reasonable society that can confine women to the back seat. It's not possible any longer. You can't confine women to the back seat and expect that you make progress. If this country must progress, we must move with our women. 
all women must lead us to progress. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu emphasized the importance of women in society, especially in a home. He urged women of all ages to be bold, assertive, and fearless in the quest for a truly just, equitable, and inclusive society. But a wig is not only apt, it's not only appropriate, it's for you to be a lot more resilient, to be aware of your environment, to have a new approach to doing things, to ensure that you have an integral and a sustainable mindset and everything that you find your hands to do as individuals, as organization, as corporate entity. I think it's important for us to know that all of you working collaboratively as partners with government, we can achieve a lot together working in unity. And so as your leader in government, it's important for us to listen and to know that the, 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 the talks and the, the, the direction that will be coming out from this year's conference today, tomorrow, and next tomorrow will set a path that we believe will help shape you know, the, the tomorrow's lady from today and will begin to shape you know, the leadership role that Lagos and Council you know, have in our government and in the convergence and the com com in the conversations of the Greater Lagos. Chairman of Council and wife of Lagos State Governor, Dr. Ibijo Kesawunlu, earlier in her opening speech, posited that recent security challenges facing Nigeria is a wake-up call for women to prepare themselves for the future. She charged women to stand and contribute positively to society. This conference is a platform for women not just in Lagos, but from all over the country and beyond our shores to come together to share experiences and insights on modern day issues affecting women, men, children, youths, the home front, and the society in general. This annual conference is one of the major initiatives of council to make a significant positive difference in society, especially in terms of creating convergence and the avenue for women to unlearn, learn, and relearn in order to align with modern realities and also prepare them ahead of challenges of life. You will agree with me that with the recent spate of kidnapping, terrorism, banditry, and other forms of violence, a convergence of this sort aimed at the future preparedness of our women is most desired. Highlights of the opening day was the presentation of the 2021 Inspirational Women Award to some members. Kafaru Uluwali Tinubu of the famous Tinubu dynasty of Kakawa Award was also presented to Nigerian female footballer Asisat Ushuala as a 2021 inspirational youth. Um, I really thank you so much. Um, I appreciate it and God bless you all. One thing I always say to people is um, make sure you have um, the right people around you, you have the right guidance around you. Um, at the end of the day, you can't do it alone, but also if you have to choose something in life that you want to pursue, make sure you do it with all your heart and I'm so sure that you, you will come out um, with flying colors. Um, don't give up on your dreams, there are going to be a lot of obstacles, there will be a lot of others to cross. Um, just keep going, um, don't give up until you get to the place you want to get to in life and I wish you good luck. That's all we have in this episode of the Greater Lagos Vision on Plus TV Africa. I'm Love Kuku Oyedoku. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.